Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for your word. It is the truth. We do receive it written in our heart and mind. Thank you for the revelation of it. Thank you for all that you're accomplishing in our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated if you would. We've been sharing with you for some time on the spiritual work of God in your life. We've been talking about spiritual knowledge and the things which we must know. And we've gone through the New Testament in detail, seeing what has been written in the different letters of the things that are important that God wants us to know so that we will become like Him, that we will walk in His ways. As we talked about today, today the, this morning in the service, that we will come to the place of understanding what is necessary to possess eternal life. And we saw the conditions that have been laid forth in the Word of God. Tonight we're going to talk about the subject in the, from Jude and also from 2 Peter. And the theme here is to see, as we see it as a theme in most all of these books, and we see that the theme here is talking about in both of these that there is evil things that are going to come in the last days. God will deliver his people who will walk in his ways. At the same time, the evil will be coming forth. And you and I must contend for the faith, the true faith. We must engage in the warfare. We must fight the good fight of faith. We must walk in the ways of the Lord and be sure that we are on the right path at all times. We begin in Jude, verse 1. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, the brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Christ Jesus and called. First of all, it's important, of course, that we look up the tense voice and mood of all of these verbs. When we look at this word here, sanctified. This is a word which is in the perfect tense. If you're here for the first time, we point out tense, voice, and mood, which is very important to understand. The perfect tense in the Greek is very significant because it is speaking of completed action in the past, ongoing completed action that's worked and brought a present state of things at this point in time. Other words, our work has been done and here's the present state. It's focusing on what has been the result of that work. So what this is talking about is not at one point in time. This is a work of sanctification which has been accomplished in these, in this one that he's speaking to, and it has the present effects at the time of the speaking. And he also speaks of the preserved in Christ Jesus. And this also, being kept or preserved, is also in the perfect tense, indicating that this is an ongoing work that God has accomplished in our life and brought us to this state at this point in time. Notice its passive voice, which means God's the one who is doing this work as you and I are walking in the Word of God. And as it speaks here to those who have been sanctified and have been preserved or kept in Jesus Christ, it speaks here of the fact that these are the ones who are the called. To those who are the called, you know, many are called, but few are chosen. The ones who are chosen are the ones who responded to the call, and they've seen the work of God be done in their life, and that's what it's talking about. The ones who called, these have seen this work of God be accomplished in their life. And when the work is accomplished in your life to bring you to the place of being sanctified, preserved, and before the Lord, then he says, mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. This is what God desires for everybody. Now when he says, mercy unto you, peace and love be multiplied, this is not something that's a command. This is not something that he says is going to automatically happen to you. This is God's desire for us. The reason we say that is because the mood of this verb is the optative mood. The optative mood is used 68 times. It's a rare mood. We talk about the subjunctive mood, which is a conditional statement. The optative mood is even one removed from that. It's God's desire of what he wants for you. In other words, mercy unto you, peace and love. He wants it to be multiplied in your life. He desires that for every single one of us. Mercy is the love of God in action toward us. It includes deliverance and healing and bringing forth his blessings. Peace is the result of that. And love being shown from the Lord unto us. Peace, mercy, love as he speaks. He wants it to be multiplied in our life. 
Then we come to verse 3. And in verse 3, he says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. The salvation is common to all. Everybody can receive it. Everybody can walk in it as they receive Jesus Christ and personal Lord and Savior and work out their own salvation, doing the word as they obey it. It was needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Earnestly contend for this faith. This means they have to do something. When you look this up in some of the lexicons, Freiburgs and Launida, make it means to make intense, strenuous effort on behalf of, a struggle for. It's warfare, contending with the adversary or contending with those who are used of the adversary to try to deceive people away from the truth. You should earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered on the saints. They had quite an attack against the true faith. And one of the things you must realize, all of these things that are written are also going to happen again in the end time. Remember that when we've talked about end time events in the past, we pointed out Isaiah chapter 46. In Isaiah chapter 46 over in verse 10, where it says, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. In other words, what's going to happen in the end? It's going to be a repeat from the things that have happened in the beginning. Otherwise, it's going to do a, happen again. It's going to twice occur, tw twice speak. It's going to happen again. Meaning that these things are going to happen and we know that we are in the last days. We know that evil times are coming upon us. First Timothy, chapter four, verse one, the Spirit speaks expressly, in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. Well, they've departed from the faith, that means they're not walking after the true faith. That's why you and I must earnestly contend for the true faith that was delivered to the saints, so you don't get off track and follow that which is a false faith. Just like there's a true grace and there's a false grace that's out there today. That in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. And what are they doing? They're giving heed to seducing spirits. What's the mark of the last days? Deceiving spirits. Deceiving spirits working to lead people astray. And also what else? Doctrines of devils. These are doctrines that are contrary to the word of God. And remember, anything that's contrary to the word of God is from the devil. Doctrines of devils are rampant in the body of Christ today. You see all these different doctrines on subjects. Well, they can't all be right. They're all wrong but one, or maybe they're all wrong for that matter. How are we going to know? They've got to be in line with the Word of God. Doctrines of devils are come, come forth in this day and age. And we continually always expose them and bring forth the truth for us so that we will walk in line with the Word. See, we've got to earnestly contend for the faith, the true faith, and walk in the ways of the Lord. We also see in 2 Timothy 3, 1, to the second letter to Timothy, he writes, This know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. We see this, we're, it's on the horizon, the perilous times are beginning to come, and they're going to increase as we go down these last days. Men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, their word means nothing, false accusers, incontinent, which means without self-control, just whatever I want to do, I'll do it, fierce, I mean these people are violent, savage acting, we see that happening right now, despisers of those that are good, they want to turn everybody's good and make it bad. Make it evil. Traitors, heady. This means they're reckless and rash. We see a lot of that going on in the world today. High-minded. Yeah, that means they're all full of pride, all puffed up. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Well, this is talking about not just about people in the world. This is talking about people that are, uh, that are Christians. Notice they're loving pleasures more than the lovers of God. We must be loving God, not seeking after the pleasures. Having a form of godliness. So this is talking about Christians or those people who say that they're Christians. 
There's many Christians that are Christians in name only today. They are not the real deal. You know them by their fruits. You know them by their works. You just listen to what they say, watch what they do, see what they, whether they're really following the Lord. And these ones deny the power thereof. Instead, they're just walking after the flesh, walking in their own ways, doing what they want. The Bible says, from such turn away. We've got to be wise so that we don't let any evil get a hold of us in these last days. Well, in Jude, he's speaking here about earnestly contending for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. We have to be following the true faith. We cannot be deceived. And so we're going to be looking through Jude, but also we'll be looking at 2 Peter, which brings out other information, sometimes very similar, of the times adding information, and it's all relevant to the things that, are, that were happening to them then, but also the things that are going to be happening in the last days, as we see. In verse 4, For there are certain men crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. What about these people? These people were turning the grace of God into lasciviousness, unbridled lust, or basically, I can do whatever I want to do, following after the flesh. No. We are under the law of Jesus Christ, and we are to live unto Him, not unto ourselves, and we are to put the Word of God first place in our life. There's been a teaching, a hyper-grace teaching, that more or less God's grace is automatic to you, and it's all God's in control of everything, and it doesn't matter what you do, and God's grace will be there. It's a lie. There are conditions for the grace of God. You have to meet the conditions if you're going to see them happen. In fact, we saw, we talked about it today. We're talking about eternal life. We saw that scripture in Romans 5, 21, where it speaks of how grace might reign, subjunctive mood, conditional statement, through righteousness unto eternal life. It's got to have, it's gotta, you have to meet the conditions. And that would be because you're walking in righteousness. God's grace is not automatic. Yet people have turned it into that whatever God, whatever you know, happens, happens, and God will do whatever he wants, and also into a kind of like, I don't have to do anything. I'm, I'm not under any responsibilities to do anything. They've been deceived, not understanding when it says that we're not under law, but we're under grace. They have failed to understand. That's talking about we're not under the Old Testament, but we're now under the New Testament. And so they thought, well, we don't have any law. We can do whatever we want. No, we do have law. Remember, as we have pointed out in the past, so many have not understood this. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 12. The priesthood being changed, which changed from the Aaronic priesthood to the Melchizedek priesthood, there's made of necessity a change also of the law. Not a doing away of law, a change. We are under the law of Christ. We are under the law of liberty. And we are now to follow the commandments of Jesus Christ that he's commanded us to do. And we've talked about the commandments. The imperative mood verbs are all over the place commanding what we're to do. Those are laws unto us. It is a change of the law, not a doing away of the law. So we see that people just kind of want to walk in whatever way they want to walk. And that is a great mistake. And denying the Lord, only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ, turning away from him. We see over in 2 Peter, parallel to this, in chapter 2, it says, There were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. Not only were there people coming in and changing the grace of God into lasciviousness, but the false prophets were out there, and the false teachers as well. And they're bringing in all kinds of false teachings, and as he says, damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bringing upon themselves swift destruction. Many shall follow their pernicious ways, their destructive ways, this means. Now, that means there's a lot of people that are making mistakes. Many contrasted with the few. The few walk the straight and narrow path, to enter into eternal life. The many walk the broad way that leads to destruction. Many 
are following their destructive ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be even evil spoken of. And they begin to turn away and speak against the word, and they begin to follow fables. They begin to follow other things that people write, other things, other extra biblical sources. We see people in the body of Christ doing that today, and that is a great mistake. The word of God is the truth. The word of God is what we follow. We do not follow anything else. Verse 3, And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you to use you to make something off of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth, lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. You see, you've got to remember we've talked about in 1 Peter 4 that before judgment comes to the world, it comes to the church, the house of God first. They're all going to be judged. And there's also going to be a fall away, remember, and the Antichrist being revealed, the man of sin. All these things are going to happen. And so the judgment will come first to the church. That's what Revelation 2 and 3 is all about. That's why it's placed before the judgment comes to the world at a later time. So here, their, their judgment is going to happen. They're not going to get away from it. Nonetheless, we see that there's many people that will follow after these ways, unfortunately. That's why you have to be one of the many, not one of the few. Excuse me, one of the few, not one of the many. One of the few, not one of the many. We follow, we're one of the many, we are going to be in trouble because they're the ones that are walking the path of destruction. We come to verse 5. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. That shows you, you could be saved at one point and destroyed at another point. Why would that be? because they did not continue in the things of the Lord. When you believe, believing is shown in action, shown by you carrying out, doing the word of God. The people got saved, but then they, they didn't follow the way of the Lord, and they got destroyed. You know, we have to understand that God will bring judgment upon those who will not continue in his ways. And we saw only those ones that keep his commandments, do his word, walk in his ways, are the ones that are going to enter into eternal life, as we saw this morning. The angels, he said, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. He's reserved in everlasting chains under darkness, under the judgment of the great day. The angels, they left their estate. They are under chains of darkness. There is no reconciliation for them, even though some people have tried to say there is. It's a lie. There's no reconciliation for angels. They're under chains under darkness. In other words, they can't come to the light. They're in darkness, and that's, they're stuck in that state and before, and unto the judgment of the great day. We go over to Second Peter, and we see, it, when it says they left their habitation, what, what did they actually do? They sinned. Verse 4, if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into the chains of darkness to be reserved for unto judgment. People that turn away from the way of the Lord and sin are going to be reserved for judgment if they will not repent and get right. Of course, the angels, they are in that state. That's why you and I must be abiding in the word, walking in the word, being a doer of it consistently. So we are following the way of the Lord. We're never going to turn away. We're never going to turn back. We're not going to be one of those that are going to be in the fallaway crowd whatsoever. And he goes on and says, Spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. No, those that walk in ungodly ways, unrighteous ways, lawless ways, sin, we saw the scriptures, those ones who've seen this completed work in them, born of God, that have seen the completed work, they don't sin anymore because they've gone into perfection. And the, the church is going to come into perfection. The church is going to rise up and become the holy nation that he has declared is going to come forth, that is going to be holy without spot, without blemish, unrebukable, unreprovable before the Lord. And it's going to be a glorious church. The glory of God will not be poured out on one that's full of sin. It's going to be those who have gone on into perfection in the Lord. Here we see... The only guy that got preserved was the one who was a preacher of righteousness. Righteousness is what is mandatory in your life. And remember, those that do righteousness will be righteous. Otherwise, all the ungodly, what's going to happen to them? 
they're all going to see judgments come upon them. We go back to Jude, verse 7. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. The fornicators are going to end up in the lake of fire. You know, people that think, oh, if you commit fornication or adultery or these kind of things, you know, and you don't repent of it, oh, you're born again, you'll still make it to heaven. It's a lie. Heard somebody say that to someone here recently. This guy who th thinks he knows things. And no, that's a lie. We walk in the ways of sexual sin. We're going to suffer the vengeance of eternal fire if they do not repent. Fornicators, adulterers, all these kind, homosexuals, people, lesbians, these people that are in perverted sexual things are going to suffer this vengeance. When we see this talk about strange flesh, what is this talking about? Strange flesh tells you that this means, the word is heteros, if you notice below. It means other or another, referring to other or another kind of flesh. And we see that there are other kinds of flesh the scripture talks about. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 39, speaks of this. All flesh is not the same flesh. There is one kind of flesh of men, there's another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. So what would this be talking about, giving themselves over to another kind of flesh? Getting involved with beasts, bestiality. There is a rise of people involved in these kinds of things. It's terrible. These kind of things are absolutely perverse, and yet we see that people are... Getting to, anything goes almost in the sexual areas out there in the world today. And bestiality is one of those things. This is what it's referring to. People that get involved in these, these kind of things. They are going to suffer the vengeance of eternal fire, as it says. We go over to Second Peter. And he talks about some different things here. He says in verse 6, turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that should live ungodly. It wasn't just for them. It's an example for anybody that lives ungodly at any time in their life. They're going to suffer that vengeance of eternal fire. And what did he do? He delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. What happened to these people? The filthy conversation. Conversation is a Greek word that means manner of life, conduct and behavior, not just talking about your talk, their lifestyle, their manner of life, their conduct, their behavior was filthy. And notice it says of the wicked. The word wicked is an interesting word in the Greek. It is this word athesmos, which means one who breaks through the restraint of law and gratifies his lusts. In other words, I'm not going to walk according to any kind of law. I'm just going to do whatever I want to. I'm going to cast off all restraint, see? And I'm going to gratify my own lusts. That's what happened to them. And we see this happening to many today. We cannot have ourselves breaking through the restraint of law. We are to walk according to the law of Christ in the New Testament. And otherwise, you'd be gratifying the lust of the flesh. We're not to walk on any of these areas of the, of the flesh. That righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul. This really means that torment, he was tormenting his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. That's why we need to be preaching the gospel to people at the same time. You're going to be around people that are doing those kind of things. You just have to just, you know, get through it. Don't be upset about it. Just realize the fact that these people with their unlawful deeds are sowing evil things in their life, and you need to preach the gospel to them, even though there'll be persecution. All those that live godly shall suffer persecution. We need to stand up for what's right. Remember, if they die in that state, they're going to end up in the vengeance of eternal fire. And notice, the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations. Any kind of temptations that come at you, get your eyes on Him, put the word first place, God will show you the way out. If you watch and pray, you won't enter into the temptation. He'll deliver you out of it. 
But also, notice, he'll reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. The unjust, adikos is the word, word here in the Greek, means unrighteous, the ones that aren't righteous. The unrighteous are going to be judged. Only the righteous are going into eternal life. The unrighteous, the lawless, they are going to be doomed. They're going to be reserved unto punishment. People that think that these things won't happen are deceived. We go back to Jude, verse 1. We come to verse 8. Likewise also these now filthy dreamers, it says. The word filthy is not there in the Greek. It was added by the translator later erroneously. Notice it's italicized. Whenever you see that in the King James, it means it's not in there. So you've got to be sure that you're not uh, believing something that's, that's, that's put in there is to be true. It literally says, likewise also these dreamers. And these dreamers are the ones, when you, when you look this particular word up, Freiburg points out that this is those promoting deluded teachings through false dreams. False dreams. We see a lot of people, they get dreams and they think they got a revelation from God and it's not in line with the word. <laughs> if it's not in line with the word, throw it out. How do you, how the cults got started? They got some dream or they got some vision or they got some appearance of a so-called angel and said it was a demon and bringing things that were contrary to the word of God. And you got them out and all, you know, and we got all these false cults that are out there in the world. You got to watch for this. These dreamers, these are the ones that they're walking after things that are false, deluded teachings. What else about these ones? They defile the flesh. They just do all kinds of things with their sins that defile their flesh, contaminate them. You walk in sin, you're contaminating yourself. And we can't just have a little sin and, and then you know, think that we're okay. No, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. It contaminates the whole deal. Also, these ones, they despise dominion. Dominion is this word that means lordship. One who's rulership or lordship over them. And the curios is the word for lord. So, they're despising anybody being lord over them. In fact, the, the word despise, though, really has an understanding when you look this up. It means, if you notice the word below, to do away with, to set aside, to disregard, to nullify, make void, uh, to, to even think little of it, hardly think anything of it at all. They don't think anything of, of it whatsoever. And um, some, some of the other lexicons refer to this. So this is talking about people that regard as nothing, they do away with, set aside, disregard, refuse, reject. They don't want anybody to be lord over their life. They want to run their own show. You can't do that. Remember, you are bought with a price. You are a purchased possession. You belong to the Lord. And you are to live according to the word of God and put the word of God in first place. You're not your own. You are to glorify him in everything that you do. And you are to, first, of course, remember Jesus said, any man come after me, what's he supposed to do first? Deny himself. Crucify the flesh daily and follow him and put the word of God first place in your life. Those ones that are promoters of false teaching through their false dreams and, and false visions, and these ones are ones that are not submitted to the Word of God. They defile the flesh. They don't want anybody to be Lord over their life. They just want to do whatever they want to do. And they speak evil of, of dignities. or They give their opinions and what they think that they want to do. They just speak evil of others. Well, that's a mistake. We don't, should never be speaking evil of others. We may point out things that are incorrect, but we shouldn't be speaking evil of others and in, in cut, cutting them down in their person. No, not at all. We see that's what's going on politically from all sides. They're crazy doing these things. They should not be doing this at all. And many people just speak whatever they want to speak, and that is a great mistake. We see in 2 Peter 2, 10, so you got, we got to have our words be few, remember? And our words need to be right words. we got to speak the right thing. In Second Peter, it speaks of this similar, chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise or think little of. This is a little bit different word, which means to think little or nothing of. Lordship. 
presumptuous are they? They're self-willed. So are these people that are submitting to God? No, these are the people that they don't want to submit to God. They just want to do their own thing. Selfish, prideful, I, 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 me, me, me mentality. We can't be that way whatsoever. You are to be totally submissive and yielded unto the Lord. And they weren't afraid, afraid to speak evil of dignities. Uh, they just will speak whatever they want. Obviously, they do not have the fear of God before them. We also see, over, back over in Jude, go to verse 9. Here it says, Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation. But he said, The Lord rebuked thee. Now, one of the reasons, why would he say the Lord rebuked thee? Because an angel is speaking to an angel. He doesn't have authority over him. Who has the authority over him? The Lord does. And he's just speaking that for the Lord rebuking him. At the same time, he's not bringing a railing accusation. I see people in the body of Christ bringing railing accusations against the devil when they're doing deliverance, which is a mistake. They're going to scream at the devil, yell at the devil, tell him you dirty old, th you know, all these things and just deride him and put him down and stuff. That's a bunch of carnality. That should never happen. You should never do it. You just cast them out. You just speak to them in command. You don't get in the flesh and get all these railing accusations and these kind of things uh, coming forth. This is all wrong. It is all of the flesh. It is all sinful. And this unfortunately goes on in circle, deliverance circles these days. It should not be happening. We see the same thing brought in 2 Peter 2.11 where our angels were greater in power and might bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. You don't be railing against anything. You be speaking just authority, speaking words, commanding, doing the works of God, not carrying attitudes. It doesn't matter who it is. We shouldn't be doing things with an attitude. That is a mistake. Jude, back to verse 10 this time. But they speak evil of the things that they know not. We can't be speaking of things that we don't know what we're talking about. We can be speaking all kinds of wrong stuff. What they know naturally is brute beasts and those things, they corrupt themselves. We've got to watch what we speak. Your words need to be only speaking truth. You should only be speaking things in line with the word. If you are bringing correction, it's always going to be according to doctrine. It's got to be in line with the word of God. And you don't speak things in the natural. You speak things in the spirit according to the word. You're going to bring these things forth when you're ministering uh, to other people. Here we see in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 12, These as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of things they understand not, they shall utterly perish in their own corruption. Watch, you just don't go, just blab on the mouth, off the mouth about things that you don't even know what you're talking about. That is a mistake. And what also does he add? These guys are going to receive the reward of unrighteousness. There's a reward of righteousness for the righteous. But notice, there's a reward of unrighteousness for those that are unrighteous. And they're in trouble. As they count it pleasure to riot in the daytime, spots they are and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. Why would people be doing this and walking in unrighteous? Because they've been deceived by the enemy. Because they have not put the word of God first place. This is why putting the Word first place in your life and knowing the Word is essential. If not, you could easily be deceived by things. You've got to know the Word yourself so that you'll always be walking according to the Word of God and you won't be deceived by any false teachings or anything false. And notice what else about these. These guys are totally in the flesh, having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin, beguiling or deceiving unstable souls, people that aren't steadfast. A heart they have exercised with covetous practices. Many of these are covetous people. And these are Christians as well as, of course, the people of the world are all like this. Cursed children, most of them are, that is. And we can't have those kind of things. At the same time, we go back to Jude. These are all things that are happening and they're going to happen again as we go down these last days. Verse 11, Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward, and perished in the gainsayings of Korah. 
What was it about Cain? Remember, Cain brought an offering, while Abel brought the firstlings, which was the birthright offering, which is the tithe of a flock. You have to do what God says. Abel's offering was accepted. Cain's was rejected because he just brought an offering of whatever he wanted to do. It's amazing how Christians today, so many, have rejected tithing. They think that it's, they, all their, their wet reasoning is that, well, we're not under the law anymore. They think it all originated with the Old, with the Old Testament law, of course, which is a lie. It started with Abel. God said in the very beginning when he had them bring the firstlings of the flocks. Also, it continued with Abraham who paid tithes unto Melchizedek. It continued there with Jacob. He brought the tenth unto him. This is all before the law came into being. And it continues in the, in the course through the law. And then, does it continue today? Absolutely. Hebrews 7, 8. If you don't know the scripture, you need to know it so you can answer people and help them to come to repentance. There's whole groups of churches and Christians that have rejected tithing, meaning they're robbing God, they're in trouble. Hebrews 7, 8. Here men that die receive tithes. There he receiveth them of whom it's witness that he liveth. Who's witness that he liveth? There's only one person, Jesus, who's been raised from the dead, alive forevermore. Where is there? In heaven, where he's at. Otherwise, Jesus receives the tithes in the Spirit as we worship the Father. We worship him as we bring of our tithes and offerings. And then he opens the windows of heaven, pours out his blessings upon us. Those people that go in the way of Cain, just doing whatever they want, whether it's talking about tithes or just anything that they want, they're in trouble. You and I are to walk according to the word of God. Ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward. Remember, he wanted that reward. He wanted the money. And then, of course, he couldn't curse them because God wouldn't allow him to curse them. So he told them how God would curse them if they got into fornication or idolatry. Just get with the Moabite women and have sexual relations with them. And then, of course, curses would come upon him. He made a great mistake, of course. He was covetous, wasn't he? He was always thinking about it. He was ready to compromise rather than do what's right. Don't be covetous and compromise anything trying to get gain. That is a great mistake. We even see people in the body of Christ doing this, even pastors, in which, are they preaching the whole counsel of God? No. We don't talk about sin. We don't talk about demons. We don't talk about things that you wouldn't like to hear. We're only going to talk about things that you would like to hear, seek or sense of approach. Then you'll want to come. Then you'll want to give. And then you all have all those finances coming in. That's a covetous, greedy spirit for gain instead of doing what God wants. No. We can hold nothing back. We must preach the whole counsel of God. Everybody has to deal with their sin and needs to cast out the demons, of course. And everything needs to be talked about. We can't hold anything back. These people are making a mistake. And also perished in the gainsaying of Korah. This means the opposition and rebellion. He was rebellious. You remember what happened to Korah? He was confronting Moses. And he didn't like the fact that Moses was the one who was in charge of everything because God had called him and he was in the position he was in. Well, they had them all come up and, of course, what happened? The earth opened up. Korah and the whole group of them went down into the center of the earth. The whole group went down to hell <laughs> because of their rebellion to authority that God has set. We must not be rebellious to God's authority to what God has set in the body of Christ, and people are, don't want to be submissive to anybody. We find this oftentimes. They don't want, they're not correctable. That's a mistake. We must be correctable. We must be submissive. We must be ready to put the Word of God first place and walk in the ways of the Lord. Those that speak against authority, opposition to authority, rebellion to authority, that was the sin of Korah. Of course, what happened? He perished. We see, again, over in 2 Peter, this is spoken of, 2 Peter 2, verse 15. 
speaking to those who have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Besor, Besor who loved the wages of unrighteousness. He was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumbass, speaking with man's voice, forbade the madness of the prophet. These guys were going the wrong direction and seeing destruction come. We go back, we'll come back to this in a minute. We're going over to Jude again as we're following through that. Verse 12. Now these ones, and remember, who are we talking about? We're talking about these ungodly men that came in, and we're also talking about the false prophets and the false teachers, and the ones that are following their destructive ways, that are going off after the lust of the flesh, don't want anybody to tell them what to do. Nobody's Lord over me. I'm self-willed. I'll do what I want. That's, what they, that's the way they are. You know, many, they just want to just please me, make me feel good kind of attitude. No, we need to hear the word of God and get ourselves right. But what happened? These guys were with them. There are spots in your feasts of charity when they feast with you. That's why we call people to walk in the ways of sin and to repent and to be right with the Lord. And we must speak forth and not hold anything back because we don't want people coming in that are going to be contaminating. Remember, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Remember the sin at Corinth? They wouldn't deal with the guy who was involved in incest. They were just letting it go by. <laughs> he says, no. Paul came in and, you know, dealt with that thing because they could not allow that sin to continue in the church. A little leaven will contam contaminate the whole group. That's why Everybody is to walk in the ways of righteousness, to be obedient, to be doing the word, come to repentance in all areas of their life. Otherwise, there'll be spots which will contaminate the group. We're not going to allow ourselves to be contaminated whatsoever. Notice what else about them. Feeding themselves without fear. They don't have the fear of God before them. We must have the fear of God before us. The conclusion of the whole matter is fear God and keep his commandments, as it says in in Ecclesiastes 12. So we got to have the fear of God before us. The fear of God is to hate evil. The fear of God is beginning of knowledge, beginning of wisdom. By the fear of the Lord, you depart from evil. If we don't have the fear of God, there's a problem. If people don't have the fear of God, they don't delight greatly in the commandments of the Lord. They just walk in their own ways. No. Notice what else it says about them. Clouds they are without water. That means they're empty. Nothing's in them. That These people don't have the word in them. The word's been taken out. Now, a lot of people have knowledge in their mind. They've known things because they've heard them. But remember, that doesn't mean the word's in you. If you do not do the word, you don't walk in it, the devil will come to take the word out of your heart. If you don't incorporate it into your lifestyle, it gets taken out. Even though you have knowledge of facts, knowledge of facts doesn't mean the word is in you. If the word is in you, it's incorporated into your lifestyle. It will be bringing forth fruit, and you will be a doer of that word. It will bring change in your life, and it will bring forth the, the character of the Lord, the fruit of God in your life. These guys are empty. Nothing's in them. And it says they're carried about of winds. That men, whatever kind of winds come their way, they get tossed every which way. And we see many people, they've got all the winds of doctrines, all, anything just blows them away. All, they're not steadfast. They're not stable in the things of the Lord whatsoever. Trees whose fruit withereth. Remember, we are the trees of righteousness. And their fruit withers. It's, no, it's, it's not working anymore. Just like this, actually, the word for autumn trees, where the leaves all fall off and there's no more fruit. That's what's happened to them. Is that supposed to happen with us? No. And it speaks of these guys without fruit, no fruit. What happens to the guy that doesn't have any fruit? He's cast away, isn't he? Remember John 15? You're not bearing fruit. You're going to be cast forth. You're going to be unconnected to the vine. The branch is cast forth and eliminated. So these guys are no fruit. Twice dead. They were dead originally. They had life. And now they're dead again. Otherwise, things have died out in their life. And they have now gone into the place where they're spirit, in spiritual death themselves. Plucked up by the roots, meaning they have no more roots in their life established to the things of the Word of God. These are the ones that are Christians in name only. We cannot allow this to happen. 
God expects you to bring forth fruit. Go through the cleansing process to bring forth more fruit. Come to the abiding place to bring forth much fruit. Without having fruit, this, that's how you know someone. If you don't have fruit, again, you're going to be cast away. These ones are walking in contrary ways. They are deceived and walking in, in it says they're raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Are these people saved? No. They're going to end up in outer darkness. They're going to end up uh, not with the Lord, that's for sure. They're going to end up eventually in the lake of fire. We go over to Second Peter chapter 2. You see, judgment is going to come. And we must understand that we are going to walk in the ways of the Lord. It is mandatory. We can't be a part of the fallaway group. We see in uh, 2 Peter 2, uh, we come down to verse 17. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest. They get blown away by any kind of attacks. To whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. Not just for a while. Forever. They're doomed. They're done. To the age is what this really literally means. They are in trouble. When they speak great swelling words of vanity, they're speaking things that are devoid of truth. They haven't learned to speak the word. They allure to the lusts of the flesh. They're deceiving through much wantonness or unbridled lusts. That's why you got to have temperance. If you don't have temperance, you're in trouble. Temperance is self-control that rules the flesh. And that is so important. You've got to be temperate in order to possess the promises in your life. Those that were clean escape from them who live in error. What are they doing? They're living, living in error, being deceived, wandering about, just doing whatever they want. How do we make sure this doesn't happen to any of us? We put the word first place. We live according to the word. We do what the word says. We walk according to the word. We speak the word. We, we submit ourselves to the word. We don't deviate away from the Word of God whatsoever. And remember, we crucify the flesh daily and make sure we're following the Word of God. And these guys, of course, they get deceived. They promise liberty. Everything will be fine for you. They themselves are the servants of corruption. These are deceiving people, see. For of whom a man has overcome, the same as he brought in bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions, which is all the defilement, of the world through the knowledge, this is the precise correct knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, because how do you come out of anything? Through the Word of God, through the knowledge of the Word that you act upon. If they get again entangled therein, involved in, you go back into things again and overcome, or they become, con they're conquered, they've been overcome, that becomes to them, is what that literally says, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Anytime you go back from walking in God's ways, you're going to get worse. Remember the one who got healed at the pool of Bethesda? Jesus found him in the temple and said, Go and sin no more, lest the worst thing comes on you. Remember the one who got the, he got, talks about getting the demons cast out in Matthew chapter 12? If the demons get cast out, the demons would like to come back into you. If they don't find you're walking in line with the word, they find it swept, garnished, but not put in proper order, what happens? The demons are going to come back in with seven more wicked himself, and the state of the man will be worse than the first. If you've overcome anything in your life, and you go back into it, you will be worse, because the demons will come in from the open door of sin. That's why we cannot ever go backwards. We are to conquer all sin. You are to conquer every work of the, anything of the flesh, that's why you've got to separate yourself from the things of this world, not touch the unclean thing, set the boundaries, get away from anything that is not of the Lord. You are to be pursuing the things of God, pursuing to become, move on into perfection in the Lord as you're here and a doer of the word and overcoming in all areas. It said it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness after they've known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. How can we who have learned the ways of the Lord turn away from it? There's something wrong. We obviously have not been committed to walk in the way of the Lord. There's lots like that. How, how, I've always wondered, how can people so easily backslide? And so many people, you see that. 
They should never backslide. If they really had an understanding of what Jesus did, why would you ever backslide? There'd be no reason whatsoever. These people are, and they, of course, they all get in worse shape as well. It happened to them again, according to the true pro proverb, the dogs turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed in her wallowing in the mire. Once the truth comes to you, you need to act upon it, incorporate it into your lifestyle, walk in it. Never turn back from it. Never. You've got to put the Word of God first place, and this is mandatory. Then we go on back to Jude, and we see, again, all this is speaking of all this is going to happen. It really is pointing towards this fall-away group that's going to be in, in the end days when we see the judgment coming on the church. Jude 1.14, Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. By the way, the word saints is not a noun. It is an adjective, which means it's referring to the ones that are the holy ones. Here it is. It's an adjective. That's why you should translate it as holy ones. Otherwise, who's coming with him? Only the holy ones. Who's the ones that make it to heaven? The holy ones. The righteous, remember righteousness, fruits of righteousness produces what? Holiness in our life. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. You need to be a holy one. And what's going to happen when he comes? He's going to bring judgment. He will execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they've ungodly committed, of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. We see people even in the world today that are speaking against Jesus, speaking against him, speaking against the word of God, speaking against Christians continually. Tremendous persecution is rising in the world and it will continue. God will protect all those ones that walk in his ways and deliver them out of it if they understand their authority. But we see the tremendous persecution that's coming. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts. Again, what's the common thing here? They're always walking in the flesh. They're following their lusts. They're following me, 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 I, I, I. They don't submit to the things of God. How can you make sure that you never fall from your steadfastness? You aren't going to walk after the lusts of the flesh. You're going to crucify that flesh daily. You're going to put the Word of God first place. You're going to be totally submissive and living unto Him. That's mandatory. These guys and their mouth speaks great swelling words. They have men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Basically, they will try to use people for their advantage is what it's saying. They just want to use people. That's why... You can't have one, you know, it talks about in James, you can't have respect to persons. Why do people have respect to persons? Because they, they, wa they want to get something from someone and someone else, oh, they're not going to help me, so I don't need them. I don't want to, you know, treat them nice. No, we've got to treat everybody right. We cannot have persons in admiration of this one because it'll be an advantage to me in some way. No. And then he goes on. He says, remember the words that were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. He says, how he told you there'd be mockers in the last time. The mockers are coming who should walk after their own ungodly loss. Again, the continual thing is they always walk after their loss. Anybody that will not submit to the word of God is walking in the flesh. They're walking after something. They're following something. Anybody that's an I, 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 me, me, me person and will not judge themselves and deal with things, they're walking after their ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves. They're divisive. They make divisions, this refers to. They're sensual. Not having the sensual really means, it's from the word sukikos. Suki, suke means soul. It means they're soulish. It would be a better way of understanding this. In the sense that they're running from their soul. Because if you run from the flesh, you're walking in sin. If you run from your soul, that's a mistake too. We're to run from our, walk from our spirit, aren't we? Our soul is to be submitted unto the spirit. That's where the battleground comes. And if you just follow what comes into your soul and you do what I want, because that's where the will, or the way I think, or the way I reason, 
Oh, you're deceived. You have to walk after the Spirit. If you will walk after the Spirit, then you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. And if you allow the lusts of the flesh to work, they'll, they'll war against your soul continually. These people separate themselves. They are soulish, walking, having not the Spirit. They're just following their own ways. But what are we to be doing? Beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. One thing will be important. You need to be built up in the Spirit so you won't get after the flesh. How are you going to be built up in the Spirit? Praying in tongues. You need, if you don't have your prayer language, you need to get your prayer language. It's available to everybody. Once you have the Holy Spirit in you, you have the prayer language. And you are to use your prayer language, praying in the Holy Ghost. It will build you up. God wants you to pray in tongues. Praying in tongues brings a building up of not all of your holy faith. It builds you up. It strengthens you. It is going to bring a filling of the Holy Spirit on the inside of you for the influence of the Holy Spirit to work in your life. And that's what God wants. We cannot allow this evil to come. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. So, get yourself built up. Keep yourself in the love of God at all times. We must remember, if you don't have the love of God, you don't even know God. We must walk after the love of God at all times. And, of course, how do you show that you love God? You keep His commandments. You do what He says. You keep His words. You follow what He says. Looking for, which really is the word to receive, it's the word dekamai refers to accepting something, looking for in order to receive the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life which will come for those who are walking in the ways of the Word of God. If some have compassion making a difference, others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Any fleshly works defiles you, because what runs comes from the flesh, sin. Sin dwells in the flesh. You cannot walk after the flesh and be sinless. God wants you to walk after the Spirit. That's how you come to the place of not sinning anymore, as we saw today when we looked at 1 John. God wants you to deal with, reach, help people, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. You want to call them to repentance so that they'll come out of it. Because if they walk in the flesh, they're spotted. Is Jesus going to present someone who's spotted to himself? No. No, you've got to be without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish, holy before the Lord. And then he goes on and says, Now unto him that's able to keep you, this is the word philosophy, which means guard, to guard you from falling. Well, why will that be important? Because there's going to be a big time fall away group, unfortunately. It's not what God wants. But those people will not walk in his ways. They'll keep you from falling and present you faultless. What's faultless mean? without blemish, without spot, before the presence of His glory with exceeding joy. Remember, your joy is full when you are entering into, you have, are in, abiding in eternal life, as we talked about this morning. We see over in Second Peter, it even talks about things also that are relative to things in the end times. Second Peter 3.3 3. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, as we saw, saying, where is the promise of his coming? I've seen articles, news articles, saying that. It's beginning to come forth. It will come forth more as we go down these days. <coughs> For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were, <coughs> excuse me, from the beginning of the creation, thinking that, oh, he's not going to come. No, he's going to come. These people are all deceived. And he goes on, and we see that coming down to verse, seeing the fact that there's going to be a new heavens and a new earth. Of course, God is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness, he's long-suffering to us, we're not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. That's why we need to be preaching the gospel to people, getting the word to people, pass out tracts, get the word to them. Because God wants everybody to come to repentance. Otherwise, they're going to be in everlasting torment in, in the lake of fire eventually. 
And he talks about the day of the Lord coming. And then he comes to verse 11. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, which they will be, because there will be a new heavens and a new earth, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy manner of life, conduct, and behavior, and godliness? Judgment comes for the ungodliness. The rewards and blessings will come from those who are godly. You're to be holy in manner of life, conduct, behavior. You are to be showing forth godliness in everything that you do. You're to be a hearer and a doer of the word. That's what produces the godliness in your life. We come down to verse 13. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Who's going to be with the Lord and with the Father when he comes in the new heavens and the new earth? Only the righteous. Anybody that's unrighteous, anybody that's lawless, they're going to be cast out. Only the righteous enter into eternal life. Righteousness. You must and remember, who are the righteous? Remember, many people have believed the lying teaching that we're perfectly righteous when we're born again. That's a lie from the devil. Almost everybody out there on a national stage and in many of the most of the denominations and so forth, whether they're fundamentalist types or full gospel, Pentecostal, uh, word of faith, whatever, or charismatic, they all teach this, and it's all wrong. 1 John 3, 7, Let a little children, let no man deceive you. Why would he write this? Because God, in his foreknowledge, knew that this subject would be an area where people would be deceived about what they're teaching. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. If you're not doing righteousness, you're not righteous. Remember, we saw it in 1 John, the one who's not doing righteousness and not loving his brother, he didn't even have God. It talks about. He's not going to have God whatsoever. Only the ones who are doing righteousness, because if you're born again and you're doing sin, you're unrighteous because of unrighteousness until you get it dealt with in your life. God wants us to come to the place of walking in his ways according to righteousness. We go back to First Peter, 2 Peter 3, we saw in verse 11, in verse 13, righteousness dwelling. Verse 14, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace, without spot, and blameless. If someone with spot, are they going to get into the new heavens and the new earth? No. Are they going to be able to enter into the city? No. If you're not blameless, you're not going to be able to enter in. There's no way. It's not going to happen. Remember, only those ones that are doers of the word are going to be able to enter in. Remember what it says in Revelation 22, 14? Blessed are they that are doing his commandments. This is a present tense, which means they are continually doing his commandments. Present tense means ongoing, continuous action. That they may have the right, or this is exousia, the authority to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates in the city. Young's brings it out correctly from the Greek. Happy are those doing his commands that the authority shall be theirs under the tree of life and by the gates they may enter into the city. Otherwise, if you're not doing the commandments of the Lord, if you're not doing righteousness, there's no way in the world that you are going to enter in whatsoever. God is going to have a holy righteous people that are walking in his ways, a holy nation, those that are going to be without spot, without wrinkle before the Lord, and we're to be blameless. If you're blameless, you're without rebuke, you can't be censured, as it says, you're not going to, the enemy will not have any place at all. We come down to verse 17, you therefore, beloved, seeing you know these things before, Beware, meaning you and I have to be on guard. It's the word philoso. Beware really means to guard. You've got to guard yourself. Every one of us has to guard ourselves from sin. Guard ourselves. Remember, if you guard yourself, the wicked will not be able to touch you, as we saw in First John today. Beware, guard yourself, lest you also remember the deception and the deceiving spirits that are going to come and 
the Antichrist lies and deception could even deceive the very elect. Remember what it says? There's only one way you're going to be able to stand. You've got to have the Word in you. You've got to come on to perfection. You've got to be walking in the Word and following Him 100%. You remember, you don't follow miracles and signs and all these things, or you're going to be deceived for sure, easily, because He's going to do all kinds of miraculous works and signs. You need to follow the Word of God and put the Word first place in your life. You cannot let lawlessness. Remember what we've seen in Matthew. We'll come back to this in a moment. What is going to happen, these people that are, in, that, in, that are going to be the fall-away group? They are not putting the word first place. They're, walking, they're not walking after the laws of the New Testament. Matthew 24, 12, because iniquity, it's the word anomia, which means lawlessness, as Young's brings out. Because lawlessness shall abound. Are we seeing lawlessness begin to abound more and more? It sure is. <laughs> People, they don't care about what the law is. Just, get, I want to win the election, however, you know. I don't care about the law. I'll cheat, I'll steal, I'll manufacture ballots, I'll do all these kind of crazy things. Lawlessness. Don't tell me, you know, I can do anything I want. They don't care about laws. It is going to increase. Lawlessness is going to abound. In that abounding, what happens? It says the love of many shall wax cold. Who's that talking about? Is that talking about the world? No. Is it talking about the Jews, as some people have tried to say? No. Why? Because the word love is agape. Who has the agape love? Only the ones who are believers in Jesus Christ are born again. That's the new kind of love. And notice, the love of many. This is the many who are in trouble that are going to fall away. It's going to wax cold. Remember, if the lukewarm gets spewed out of his mouth, you know what's happening to the cold. They're done for sure. How did they get to that place? Because of lawlessness got a hold of them because they did not walk according to God's laws and they got influenced by all the lawlessness all around them. That's why separate yourself from the things of this world. You do not want to be watching, hearing, seeing any of this garbage you don't want to be involved with things that are going to be lawless. They're going to have an effect upon you. You've got to protect yourself and guard yourself because your love needs to be hot for the Lord and it should never begin to decrease in any way whatsoever. Otherwise, you're in great trouble. Again, we go back to 2 Peter. God wants us to put the word first place. These things are happening and they're going to increase and abound in the days to come. 2 Peter 3.17 You therefore, beloved, seen you know these things before, guard yourself, lest you also be led away with the error, plain A, being deceived, of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness. And what's the word wicked? We saw it once before. We see it again. It's only used two times in the New Testament as far as the use of and this is the second use. This is one who breaks through the restraint of law and gratifies his lusts. Meaning, he's not walking according to God's laws. Which means, he's lawless. Remember, sin is lawlessness. We saw that in 1 John today. If you're not walking according to God's word, you're walking in sin. And if you're walking in sin, you're walking in lawlessness means if you haven't conquered sin, lawlessness will increase in your life, and no wonder your love will wax cold because of lawlessness will bound in you. You can't allow that. You've got to put the word first place. And notice, he said, lest you might fall from your own steadfastness, firm condition. That means you can be in a firm condition one minute, and you're not anymore because you haven't been putting the word first place. What kind of a church is Jesus going to present to himself? See, this is presenting what happened then. They had problems, but it's coming again. Everything is going to happen again. All these things are happening now, and they're going to continue to increase, and they're going to be abounding in these last days. We already see what is happening. That's why we got to make sure that we are walking in the ways of the Lord, and we're never going to allow anything contrary to the word to get a hold of us. 
turn off the TV from any garbage stuff that you're watching. And some people say, well, I don't watch the, the stuff that's the real bad stuff. I watch the family-friendly stuff. You know, oh, I got the parental control. It takes out the swear words and all that. Is that okay? No. Why? Because what are they going to teach you? They're going to teach you how to get angry. They're going to teach you how to be spiteful. They're going to teach you to be unforgiving. They're going to teach you to be jealous. They're going to teach you to be retaliatory. They're going to teach you for all these evil things that are going to happen. They'll teach you to lie. They'll teach you to control and manipulate other people. All those, they all have that in them. They all have all kinds of fleshly, evil, worldly things. They'll teach you how to be greedy. They'll teach you how to, you know, take advantage of this person for my own advantage, you know, and forget about this person. They'll teach you all those things. Uh, is that going to put the character of God in you and the Word of God in you and cause you to be walking in His ways? No. You want nothing to do with anything that does not pour the Word of God and the truth into you. Who's Jesus coming back for? He's going to present to Himself. In fact, let's first of all go over to Colossians. Colossians 1. Look what it says about him. 21, you that were sometime alienated enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now is he reconciled. We've been reconciled. We've come back into relationship with him. Great. What else is to happen? Of course, it says how it happened in the body of his flesh through death. For what? To present you holy, unblameable, unreprovable in his sight. How can I get to that place? If you continue in the faith grounded, the foundation laid, settled, you're firm, immovable, nothing can shake you, and you're not moved away from the hope of the gospel. You're walking in the Word of God. Hope is in the area of the soul, anchoring the soul and the Word. Faith is of the heart. Your heart's right. you got the Word before you, and you're walking uprightly before the Lord. And then in Ephesians, he's going to have a glorious church. There will be a glorious, holy church that will be one in one accord that is going to be presented unto him that he might present it to himself a glorious church a glorious church is where the glory of God is manifest remember what happened in the book of Acts the glory of God was poured out remember what it says in Haggai that we've talked about the glory on the latter one will be greater than the former and you and I are to be a part of that glorious church. Not having spot, wrinkle, or any such thing, but it should be holy and without blemish. You and I are going to go on to perfection. You've heard me talk about it a lot. We're going to grow up in all things. We're going to be doers of the word. We are cutting off all areas of sin. We crucify the flesh daily. We deny ourselves and live unto him. We put the Word of God first place. We do not give place to anything that the enemy brings. We conquer every temptation. And we are coming to the place of seeing this completed work in our life be completed to the point where we're not walking in sin. We're not walking in anything that is contrary to the Word of God. We've gone on unto perfection to be the glorious church. Say this, Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you for the Word of God that brings revelation of the things they had to deal with. But it's coming around again in these last days. I see what God expects as they had to contend, earnestly contend for the true faith that was delivered to the saints. And they had to deal with the ungodly men and the false teachers and the false prophets, and those that walked after the flesh, and that were mockers, and those that were doing whatever they wanted. I, 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 me, me, me. I thank you. I will walk in line with the word of God. I will deny myself. I will crucify the flesh. I will walk in holiness without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish, unrebukable unreprovable. And this will happen because of God's work in my life through the word that I hear and do. I put the word of God first place in my life. 
I am guarding myself. As the commands were given in Romans 6, I will not let sin reign in my body, and I will not yield my members unto sin, unto death. I yield myself unto the Lord. I put the word first place. I am walking in the ways of the Lord. I will bring forth fruit. I'm going through the cleansing process. All sin getting rid of. All works of the flesh put away. All evil spirits being cast out. As I am perfecting holiness in the fear of the Lord, I thank you that as I get cleansed, I will bring forth more fruit. And I come to the abiding place, I will bring forth much fruit and be a true disciple of the Lord and be a part of the Holy Church which is being raised up in these last days. I will be one of the few, not one of the many. I am walking the way of the Word of God. I'm walking as He walked. I will abide in the Word of God, walking in the truth, as we saw this morning, so that I will enter into eternal life. Thank you, Lord. I will be righteous, I will be holy, and I will be upright, a perfect heart. I will go on into perfection. Sin will be eliminated from my life. Thank you for the work you're doing and will continue to do as I'm a hearer and a doer of the Word of God to bring me to this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. We've talked about a lot of things in these last 15 messages on what God wants you to know. And it's covered a lot of things that are important. If you have heard those and you have incorporated them into your lifestyle, God is doing a great work in you and He will continue to do that. The cleansing process is important. That's why you've got to be casting out the demons consistently. That's also why you've got to get rid of all this filthiness of the flesh and put away all these things. And you've got to guard yourself. Remember, any ground you've gained, if you open the door to the enemy, you're going to be a whole lot worse. Oh, we've got to protect ourselves. We've got to guard ourselves so the wicked one will not touch us. Make sure you're walking the way of the Word of God and following Him all the days of your life. Do not make a mistake of yielding to sin. The pleasures of sin for a season will take you down to destruction. We cannot allow that. You walk in the way of the Lord, God will bless you greatly. Father, we thank you for all that you have accomplished and all you're bringing forth in our life. As we're taking hold of all of these messages in the Word of God we see in the New Testament, we are doers of the Word, not hearers only. It's incorporated into our lifestyle. We thank you that we are purifying ourselves so we become like Him. And that when we, He comes, we'll be like Him because we will have purified ourselves and gone into perfection. Father, thank you for this great work you're accomplishing in every one of us. We will be one of the few, not one of the many, and we will be holy before you. Thank you for accomplishing this great work in every one of our lives because we're hearers and doers of your word. In Jesus' name, amen.